Our Father in heaven, our scripture today is Luke 11, verses 1 through 13. Listen for the word of the Lord. Jesus was praying in a certain place. And after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. As John taught his disciples, he said to them, when you pray, say this, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us and do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, suppose one of you has a friend and you go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves of bread for a friend of mine has arrived and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, don't bother me. The door has already been locked and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given you. Search and you will find, knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives and everyone who searches finds and for everyone who knocks, the door will be open. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give you, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So that's one version. I prefer this message version, so this is another translation. One day, Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said, Master, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. So he said, when you pray, say, Father, reveal who you are. Set the world right. Keep us alive with three square meals. Keep us forgiven with you and forgiving others. Keep us from ourselves and the devil. Then he said, imagine what would happen if you went to a friend in the middle of the night and said, friend, let me have three loaves of bread. An old friend traveling through just showed up and I don't have anything on hand. The friend answers from his bed, don't bother me, the door is locked. My children are all down for the night. I can't get up to give you anything. But let me tell you, even if he won't get up because he is a friend, if you stand your ground and keep knocking and waking all the neighbors, he will finally get up and get you whatever you need. Here's what I am saying. Ask and you will get it. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. Don't bargain with God. Be direct. Ask for what you need. This is not a cat and mouse hide and seek game we are in. If your little boy asks for a serving of fish, do you scare him with a live snake on his plate? If your little girl asks for an egg, do you trick her with a spider? As bad as you are, don't you think as bad as you are, don't you think the Father who created you in love will give you the Holy Spirit when you ask him? This is the word of the Lord. So praying. Even though I have graduated from seminary, which means that I spent many years searching for answers about God and searching for answers in myself and learning patterns and behaviors and how that lines up with the message of Christ, and preaching is my job, teaching is my job, I still find once in a while that I become a little uncomfortable with praying out loud. There, I've said it. I wonder if any of you would be willing to admit it too. Sometimes I struggle with praying. You know why? Well, I've spent some time really thinking it through and I think part of it was because of how I was raised. I was brought up in a very small, intimate Presbyterian church, and a lot of what we did and our rituals in worship were done in silence. So you know the part of the prayer of confession where then you remain in silence and go to God in prayer, that was kind of where I lived in my prayer life. So not a lot of feelings were expressed. We didn't outwardly cheer or holler amen during the service. And praying was pretty much left to the pastor or a small group like elders and deacons. 
I can honestly say I never really learned to pray out loud until seminary. And then when I did start to learn to pray, I was so insecure because I felt prayer was so intimate. It was like meant for a quiet space just between you and God, right before you fall asleep at night, that kind of thing. I certainly didn't know that it was to be out loud and extra open and exposed. So as a student, as I was planning to become a pastor, I did a lot of battle with that. I'll admit it and say it plain, I had such a hard time that I found even freestyle prayers, um, like over a meal, were awkward and almost uncomfortable for me. Now, in silence, if I were alone, I could weave these complicated prayers that included so many people in so many circumstances and had conviction and confidence, as you would expect a pastor to have, but that was in silence and quiet. On the spot, I froze, or I stumbled over my words, or when someone would say, um, anyone willing to pray for us, I would wait and kind of slink back in hopes I'd be invisible and someone else would take that lead. It felt more like I was talking to the people around me instead of communicating with God as part of a network of people of faith or with God as a Christian leader able to publicly exclaim needs and desires from God. So anyway, I could say all of this just to say that I totally relate to these disciples in the text for today. Here's where they say, like, seriously, Jesus, can you just teach us how to pray? I get it. I completely understand where they're coming from. Like, seriously, God, you know what's going to happen. Why am I spinning my wheels here and exposing myself with embarrassment and insecurities when you can just point to the right way? Someone, please just tell me what to say, right? Well, Jesus did. Okay, now all that seems simple enough, and it's a prayer that I can easily pray. In fact, I've even memorized this prayer of Jesus. I could whip it out for any occasion. Why not just use that one? Well, over the time that I have had the chance to really take this prayer deep within myself and process it, I've also had the opportunity to live a little more life and experience ministry in a different way, which has led me time and again to look again and spend time with God in prayer in hopes God would reveal the point and the purpose. And I've come to two conclusions about this whole praying business, especially the Lord's Prayer and what Jesus is teaching in the scripture that we're looking at for today. The first thing that God revealed to me about prayer is that it should always be done with confidence, out loud, at all times, for every reason, in celebration, in trial, in sorrow. And Jesus is the perfect model for how these things are to be done, how to pray. Not only does Jesus give clear indication that praying is to be bold, in Luke, Jesus says, don't bargain with God, be direct, ask for what you need. This is not a cat and mouse hide and seek game that we're in. And he uses the illustration of the neighbor to show us how persistent we need to be. Bold, he says, if you stand your ground and keep knocking and waking up all the neighbors, he will finally get up and get you what you need. So what did Jesus teach us about praying? We can easily see that Jesus prayed for others. In Matthew 19, 13, we read, Then the little children were brought to him for him to place his hands on them and pray for them. Another fine example. And Jesus prayed with others. Luke 9, 28 reads, Jesus took Peter, John, James with him and went up on the mountain to pray. Jesus prayed alone in Luke 5, 16 reads, But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Jesus prayed in nature. Psalm 19, 1 reads, The heavens declare the glories of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Jesus prayed regularly. The inside is gleaned from a passage cited earlier. Luke 5, 16, Jesus often withdrew to these lonely places. I can embrace the importance of prayer, and I do so like the comfort and soothing presence of God that I feel when I really dig deep and pray for long periods of time. I can't imagine going through a day without conversing with God at every turn. I definitely still need to work more so on the praying in public and boldly praying at the drop of a hat for every reason, but 
God ain't through with me yet either. That leads me to my second revelation about prayer, especially the focus of today's sermon, the Lord's Prayer. Can I dare say out loud that no matter how many times I have said, do not bring us to this time of trial, I always come to a time of trial. Always. No matter how many times I ask God for my daily bread, it never feels sometimes like I have enough. You know what? Even Jesus knew that not all prayers would be answered and expect, as expected. As he cried out to God the Father from Gethsemane in Matthew 26, 36 through 44, three times Jesus prayed for God to allow an easier path. But Jesus knew, yet not as I will, but as you will. Unanswered prayer is such a challenge in the Christian life, but not all prayers are answered as we would expect them to be. God is not a genie in a bottle that we can rub every time we need a favor, but as Christians, we should trust beyond measure of a doubt that we are loved, we are provided for, and we are protected, even if it doesn't feel that way sometimes. Right now, think back to the hardest days that you've had in the past few months. Think about it. You got through it. You're here watching this video. Or maybe you're still going through it, right? But you woke up today and you're with your church family and some way, somehow, the odds are in your favor that you will make it through this day too, no matter how hard it may be. I'm currently reading a book titled A Beautiful Mess. In it, the author is talking about how a new life can be born out of chaos, that chaos can actually be a blessing. At first I wasn't buying it, but then she said this, the truth is we are afraid of things that we cannot control. Chaos is uncontrollable by its very definition. You can't predict what it will do or what effect it will have. This makes those of us who fear change and loss of control very uneasy. We like to know what we're facing and we like to control the environment around us. But chaos doesn't care about our fear. Chaos enters and turns everything upside down. Perhaps this is the right treatment for those of us who think we can hold it together at all times. Those of us who are afraid of change and afraid of circumstances beyond our control. This mess called chaos reorders things in our lives. It shifts our priorities. It shifts and it changes our values and reminds us what is really important. That statement kind of blew my mind. It really rocked the little bag of anxiety that I like to carry around with me too, especially as I meditated so hard on this scripture. Now, I can get real with all of you. I know that much. You are a remarkable, come as you are, all are welcome kind of people. So I feel safe telling you another one of my secrets. As a single mother of three boys, I have been married before and divorced very young. And I've, as you know, raised these boys day in and day out by myself. We don't have a whole lot, but we've always had enough. And even though I believe I have faith in God that could move mountains, I carry around with me a whole lot of anxiety. I worry and I wonder and I worry and I wonder and I worry and I wonder. Sometimes I even get frustrated with God for not necessarily meeting my expectations in the way that I foresee. And sometimes it does feel like we don't have what we need. So you know what recenters me in those moments. I'll give you a little tip. It's the Lord's Prayer. I mean, when it feels like payday will never come or there won't be enough food in the house or the world is in violent, on fire, in protest or arguing and cousins and sisters, brothers and uncles aren't speaking because of politics and when I can't do all the numbers in my head or heal all the bodies that need healing, I wonder what is really important? How do I boil this down into one thing that is the next right step or the next right thing or the thing I truly need most? Well, for one, we can turn to the Lord's Prayer. I believe it is the Lord's Prayer that is actually outlining the things that we should consider most important. And maybe that prayer has ordered things in the order that we should consider them necessary and redeemable 
and in chaos in our lives each day that we need to refocus and center. I know that's a bold statement, but come here with me on this one. If you are ever caught in chaos and maybe find yourself filled with anxiety or sadness, maybe watching television and seeing all the destruction and the madness, consider this prayer in this order. Our Father who art in heaven, praise God, eh? Hallowed be thy name. Our God is a faithful and holy God who lives and rules over us. God is there with us, in us, and God can be reached just by calling out. Number two, thy kingdom come, this will get better. Our conflicts, be they internal or external, will one day come to resolution. There is hope, there is healing. God's kingdom will come and restore us. I believe that gives us permission and freedom to relax. Although it may be hard right now, it's going to get better. It has to get better, and although we can't see it or touch it, it's coming, friends. I promise you that. Number three, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What is God's will in this situation? What is God going to do with this circumstance, this struggle, this trial or tribulation? Maybe it's an argument with your neighbor, and through that argument, we come to see in ourselves how we might hold on to some grudges that make us physically ill, that are less than healthy, that pour out into particular situations that are unrelated. And that leads us to start digging deeper into our heart to see where that anger and resentment comes from. We cannot fix what we will not face, my friends. The chaos sometimes makes us face it, difficult as it may be. God's will for us is to be free of pain and hurt and to find wholeness in forgiveness and peace. Or maybe for me, it's realizing that sometimes I really don't pay attention to certain things and they get out of hand because I'm busy worrying about things that are less important. God's will is being done in our lives because through the struggle, we have found space where we need God's grace and we need to pay closer attention to how we live and walk in this life. Our God is a trustworthy God. His promises have come to fruition again and again. And we have to trust that in every moment of our lives, God's will is working itself out. That we just need to embrace that God will need us to be a willing partner in that work. And number four, give us this day our daily bread. Today is one day. Tomorrow's another. God, just give us what we need to make it through the day. If we spend a lot of time looking to tomorrow or marinating on the future or marinating on dissatisfaction about what we don't have today, we will miss the peace that God promises us. Matthew 6, 30 through 32 says, If that is how God clothes the grass on the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace, will he not much more clothe you? O oh, you of little faith, therefore do not worry, saying, What will we eat, and what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans pursue these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. Number five, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us, or debtors, or trespassers. Forgiveness can be super hard, but God has given us a wonderful example of what it looks like to forgive others and forgive often in Jesus Christ. We also have the privilege of God's grace. So if we don't get it right, we can try again tomorrow. Number six, and deliver us from evil. At the end of the day, we just sigh and say, Lord, deliver us from evil. It may not be today. It may not be tomorrow. We will probably have to wait until the kingdom comes again. Let's be real. But ultimately, we will be delivered from evil. And God will heal and make it right again. This is God's promise to all of us one way or another and probably beyond our human understanding. But folks, we will be delivered. Rest assured. Amen. So ask and you will get it, but keep asking and asking and asking and asking. And when you don't think you are getting what you need or what you want, change your ask. Decide in that moment that you will ask God to help you understand what it is you need right now. Maybe not tomorrow or the next day, but what do you need in that moment, in that day that God is offering to you a full day with a clean slate? God is offering to you an opportunity to reorder your life, reorder your thoughts, and reorder your understanding of such things to get it 
and God will be with you in the beginning and the end. If you seek, you will find, but don't stop seeking. Even if what you find isn't always pretty and what you think you ought to find isn't always right. Asking and seeking and asking and seeking and through God's grace and mercy, not only will you find forgiveness, truth in love, answers to the questions beyond what you think you've ever even asked, but you also might find the opportunity to enjoy the promise of peace that passes all understanding. Ultimately, if you continue knocking, the doors that are meant for you to be opened will open. God will always be there to invite you in. Now, as I revealed to you, I was raised in an environment where praying was a silent affair. Today, as I close out this sermon, I would like to join together in a group prayer. It can be as short or as long as you'd like for it to be, but I hope that for the next few seconds, you just take a time to pray with me. I'm going to say these words and I want you in your homes, wherever you may be, to answer, Lord, hear our prayer. Okay, you ready? Dear God, thank you for bringing us together here to worship virtually online. Even though we cannot be apart, we still desire to learn how to be a community together. Lord, please give us those opportunities and open the doors for us to continue to grow the ministry at Bethany Presbyterian Church, and in doing so, grow our own faith individually and as a church family. Lord, hear our prayer. God, we are thankful for the wisdom of Jesus that guides us in right living and gives us hope and strength to live into the will of God, knowing that we will one day be reunited and the world set right. Today, we pray for those in our country who go to bed to, at night without enough food to eat, our military who are overseas, and the violence we have witnessed over the past few weeks. Lord, hear our prayer. God, be with us in our journey ahead into the week ahead, unknowing what we may expect. We ask that you be there before we get there and you greet us as we arrive. Help us to find peace and tenderness and care for those who are hurting. Help us find understanding and words to questions that are difficult to even ask, let alone answer. Lord, hear our prayer. For victims of violence and abuse, Lord, hear our prayer. For our families that are near and far, close or estranged, Lord, hear our prayer. For the victims of violence throughout the world and the violence response to that, Lord, hear our prayer. For our government, both local and national and global, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, thank you for the people at Bethany Presbyterian Church for their gifts and talents and their struggles and triumphs. You are doing a great work in this community, Lord. Lead us into tomorrow even better than we entered into today, we pray, and give us strength, courage, and wisdom as we long to know you better and better every day. We ask all this using the prayer that you've taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. I will see you again soon. Call me if you need me. Text me if you need me. I'm thinking of setting up an opportunity to come and have coffee on the front porch um, and ask for visitors to come by so we can socially distance and catch up. Or if you want me to come to your house, I'll do that too. All right, love you all. Go in peace.